Hi team, welcome to 10 Talks. Today's conversation is all about winning your well-being and we're going to focus on raising your leadership cue. What does well-being and leadership have to do with each other? Well, most importantly, we've got to start with you. We need you to lead yourself through the change that matters to you. And today we're talking nutrition. We've got Dr. Hunter who is on our team to really share with us from a lifestyle management perspective What's going on with the foods that we put in our bodies? What are they doing? Is it working for us, not for us? Today's conversation is all about winning nutrition. Thank you for having the courage to be a champion for you and really join us as we figure out what you're eating and what's it doing to your body. So Dr. Hunter, explain to us really the power of nutrition and our choices. So Carlette, what I help people work on in lifestyle medicine when we focus on nutrition is moving across the spectrum. So as you said, I'm not necessarily here to make everyone a vegan. You know, I think we certainly know the health benefits of eating a, you know, low oil, whole food, plant focused diet. Those are indisputable. And we know that every step you make across the spectrum from what you see here on the left of what America eats, I call this SAD, the standard American diet, pretty sad state of affairs, right? So there's not a lot of actual food on that plate, very highly processed. Um, We know that these calories are very impactful as far as um, getting absorbed in your upper GI tract. So you're going to absorb all of these high caloric foods. Not a lot of them are making their way down to your lower colon, your your gastro where your microbiome lives, all the critters that live in your gut and digest your food. And that's really where the magic happens and the microbiome loves fiber. So mm-hmm. as we move along this spectrum towards a whole food plant-based eating plan, um, you increase the amount of fruits and vegetables in your life, you increase your high fiber foods, and we can see really amazing changes in your disease state, You know, seeing cholesterol come down, seeing diabetes be controlled and reversed. And it, again, fiber foods, which are only found in plants, really feed our microbiome, which the new evidence that's coming out around the importance of a microbiome is really amazing. Um, I was listening to a webinar yesterday where they were talking about chronic pain and the importance of a healthy gut microbiome and its impact on chronic pain. So um, we know that what we put in our mouths really impacts our health overall, and it affects multiple organ systems. And I like to think of the idea of gas versus fuel. So everyone knows what their macros are, right? Protein, carbs, fat, that's our gas. That's what we put in the engine to run the car. Now, oil is a little different, right? You can run your car for a long time without changing the oil. If you run out of gas, the car stops. If you don't change the oil, the car will keep running. Eventually things are gonna get really ugly, right? Your engine's gonna seize up, you know? So we, I think about fruits and vegetables, plant foods as the oil, because that's where the micronutrients are, the plant chemicals, we call them um, phytonutrients or antioxidants you've probably heard of. And they really are so important for performance for long-term health and uh, for the health of the microbiome. So we need both. We need gas and oil for peak performance um, and for optimal health. So what's interesting about this is when we think about everything's about protein right now, we're hearing that (laughs) and how it's such a winning strategy to losing weight, to peak performance, to everything. The answer is protein. And people are just pounding protein powders and protein this and protein. What are your thoughts on that? I love that you bring that up, Carlette, because I hear this all the time. Where am I going to get my protein if I'm eating mostly plants? And the good news is that plants are highly nutritious. You can actually get all the protein you need in your diet from plants. You do have to vary your sources of protein. So in animal protein, you can get all of the essential amino acids by just eating chicken. Um, If you just eat black beans, you might miss a few essential amino acids. So you need to have a wide variety, but that's also going to keep life interesting, right? Um, So you can see here, I mean, most people think of eggs as the perfect protein and such a high protein packed source, but a cup of red lentils has three times the protein of egg, one egg. So it's 
really uh, impressive the amount of protein we can get from plants and that um, we actually need a lot less protein than we think we do. So the average man or woman needs 45 to 60 grams of protein a day. Now, high performance athletes might be more than that, but some of the recent data that I've been seeing is when you think about fueling for performance, fueling for weight loss, it's actually much more significantly skewed to carbs than it is to protein. And when I talk, when I say carbs, I don't mean donuts and uh, frosted flakes, right? I mean, the whole foods, the, the brown foods, what I call them, and we'll talk about that more, but really high value, highly nutritious, fiber filled carbohydrates that are not only going to, you know, help you feel full and stay full longer, um, but really it, keep that nutrition going for hours. So Dr. Hunter, when we think about really being this champion athlete in our lives, whether we're at working at work or being a mom or whatever it is we're doing, it's so much about just being able to eat healthy, be quick about it, be able to kind of satisfy that hunger pain that I've got without necessarily the time investment of food preparation and big meals or, you know, we're, we're really working against the the amount of time versus how can I just fuel up and also having access to things. We live in a beautiful country of having great access, yet sometimes we don't, uh, are not able to actually get the things that we need. This is a beautiful example of kind of the simple way of what we can grab and do with it. What are some winning strategies? Let's just take a typical day. And again, we're back to leadership cue and we're really leading ourselves on raising our intelligence on how to be the best leader for us with our nutrition. We're introducing change, which is always a bit of an opportunity. And we're thinking about how can I just make small adjustments that give me a big impact on my desired outcome of how, whatever I'm going for. So share with us some winning strategies on how to begin some small implemental changes. Yeah, I really like to focus on a few strategies. So one is um, it does require a little bit of preparation, but doing some batch cooking or bulk prep. So things like um, you know, and if you know you like to have rice with your dinner, instead of making one cup of rice every night for dinner, make four cups of rice on the weekend. Rice actually will stay good in the fridge for four to five days. It freezes really well. It's one of those very versatile staple bulk foods. Um, and in lifestyle medicine, we would encourage brown rice or some of those other ancient and whole grains like barley and farro, quinoa. But really, you can prepare those ahead of time and have them available through the week. Um, I always like to think of, you know, how can I fit in more fruits and veg? So things like prepping some salads, or if you've got your shopping done for the week, chopping your veggies, having those ready to go. So they're kind of a grab and go option. If you have the financial availability to do it, buy some of those things already prepped, you know, get those little bags of apple slices, get the mini bags of carrots, um, the pods of avocado and hummus, have some just healthy options on hand. And I think frozen foods have gotten a bad rap for a really long time, but really, especially fruit, frozen fruit is your friend when it comes to accessibility, to having things on hand that you can add to a recipe easily. Um, fruit actually really locks in most of its nutrition at the time of ripening. So when we have a blueberry that in January in the Pacific Northwest that was picked in a uh, you know, Southern Hemisphere country and comes up to us two weeks later and they want it to be ripe when it shows up on the shelf but, and not spoiled, it has to be picked way before it's ripe. So those, our produce that comes to us in a, in a major supermarket um, has less nutrition than if we were growing it ourselves, picking when it's, when it's ripe and consuming it right away. So for fruit, you can really get around that by buying frozen because frozen fruit is picked at the time of ripeness and flash frozen. And as long as it's just blueberries on the bag, not blueberries in sugar water, it's a whole food, right? So um, and then it's, you can take out what you need, you put the rest back and you're not losing any of the nutrition because it's picked at the time of ripeness and, and processed for you, you know, very minimally to seal that in. Now vegetables, you'll still get the fiber from frozen vegetables. And if that's your best option to get veggies on the table every day, 
you're not going to hear me complain, but there's a little bit less of those antioxidants, phytonutrients, plant chemicals, because a lot of the frozen veggies do get um, blanched, which is just quickly boiled before they're frozen. So things like broccoli um, is going to lose some of its nutrition. Now that's not true for all vegetables, frozen corn, it's going to have all the same nutrition in it. Uh, it's actually very interesting that um, it varies fruit to fruit, vegetable to vegetable, how we um, choose them in the grocery store, how we store them, how we prepare them can really alter the nutrition. Uh, but again, even if, if frozen vegetables are your best option, again, as long as it's broccoli, not broccoli and cheese sauce, it's a whole food and it putting it on your plate is going to benefit your health. So that's one strategy is kind of what are my convenience foods that are going to be healthy and minimally processed? The other is batch cooking. So as we were talking about before, really making sure you're eating across the, the plant kingdom is going to help boost the amount of antioxidants, plant chemicals you have access to. So Carlette, do you know what the USDA recommends as far as servings of fruits and vegetables every day? I'm not coached up on that. Definitely not an expert. Absolutely not. Coach us up. Seven to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables per person in America per day. And that's for optimal health, right? And this is because we're getting sicker as a country. So we need more of these plant foods to power us up. Um, and it's also because the nutrition in our food has changed. Like I'm talking about, you know, we get a lot of our food from far away. And by the time it gets to us in the store, the nutrition is lower. So a goal that I usually make with my patients is what I call the rainbow diet. So I try to have people focus on five servings of fruits or veg per day, one in each color of the rainbow. So choosing a red, an orange, a yellow, deep leafy green, and blue or purple. And when you access all of the colors of the rainbow, what happens is that you get access to all of those plant chemicals, phytonutrients that exist in the different color families, because what exists in red does not exist in any of the other color families. Each of these color families has 10 to 20 to 100,000 different plant chemicals that do amazing things in our bodies. So if, if your day to day, two to three servings of fruits and vegetables, which is, you know, 60% of America eats one serving of fruit or vegetable or less. So we have a ways to go to get to that seven or 13. But if you're eating the same three things every day, like, oh, I have a spinach salad and an apple and a banana, right? Then you're missing out on blue and purple, the berries, the purple cabbage, the um, beets, you know, those things have such potent antioxidants, uh, imp really important for our cardiovascular health. So we really need it all. So kind of Eating through the rainbow, I love that because everybody knows the colors of the rainbow. It's something you can bring up in your mind at any time. And if you want to make a small change, this is one you can really work on and have it be really succinct. So I play this game with my kids too. They come to me before dinner, mom, I'm hungry. I'm like, great. What colors do you need to fill in? And they'll say, oh, I had yellow today. I had mac and cheese. I'm like, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what colors of fruits and veggies have you had today and what haven't you had? Okay, let's get out a cucumber, you know, let's, so uh, I play it with myself too. I'm hungry. I'm looking for a snack. Oh, you know, I haven't had my apple yet today, or, you know, I haven't had any green. Let me see if we have some snap peas. And one of the biggest things about eating more fruits and vegetables is just having them available so that you can choose them as the quick choice. Um, and it gets back to some of that, a little bit of pre-planning, right? What, what am I going to eat today or for this week? A little bit of maybe chopping and getting things ready, um, but really setting yourself up for success to have a healthy choice on hand. So we've heard a lot of information about sugar and uh, fruits, having a lot of sugar, and there's just so many mixed conversations out there. I support the experts and everything that everybody is coming out with. Really would love the simple version from a clarity perspective of What's happening with that sugar from the fruit? Is it good for me? How do we have all these servings? What does that do from a sugar perspective? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I will say that a serving is about the size of your fist. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the sugar that is in fruit when it is a whole food, and I'd like to just take one second to define what a whole food is. So whole food means that it's as close to the animal or plant as you can get it. So um, we'll talk about the brown foods in a minute. I mean, brown rice is rice. We make it white rice. So brown rice is the whole food. White rice is the processed outcome. So an apple is a whole food. Now, if you made it into applesauce at home, 
it's minimally processed and you're controlling exactly what's going into that. If you buy applesauce in the store, that's going to be more processed, maybe even have some artificial flavors or chemicals, some added sugar. And then apple juice is going to be the most highly processed because all that's left is the sugar water. So the interesting thing about fruit intake is that um, there is no sugar in nature, maybe honey's the exception, that does not get paired with fiber. So mm -hmm. when you eat an apple, it may have, you know, I don't know the grams of sugar in an apple, eight to 10, let's just say that. But it also has five grams of soluble fiber and fiber paired with sugar slows down the digestion Again, fiber helps that food get into your colon where your your uh, microbiome gets to do great work on it. And so I never tell people that they should avoid fruit. What you need to think about is what's a serving. So a serving is maybe half of a large apple. A serving is, you know, a handful of berries or grapes. If you eat two pounds of grapes, it's going to shoot your blood sugar through the roof, right? And when we think about those seven to 13 servings a day, we really do aim for more veggie than fruit, mm -hmm. right? So I try to get people to think about, you know, could you get two to four servings of fruit per day and five to seven servings of veg? Like that would be a really good range. Again, most people, I'm just trying to get them to five halfway to the USDA goal. And that literally doubles or triples most people's fruit and vegetable intake. In terms um, of apples, is there, is green or red any better or worse? I mean, that's where it gets a little tricky with all the yeah. choices we have out there. Absolutely. And, you know, I read a really interesting book called Eating on the Wild Side by Joe Robinson, and it's all about food that's commercially available, how do we pick the ones that the most are nutritious? And it's not intuitive because we all think an apple is an apple is an apple. These the the produce that's available currently has been bred for very specific flavor profiles, sweetness, accessible carbs, you know, I mean from how we started as hunter gatherers to where the food is now, I mean a banana that we eat now has no represent, you know, no um resemblance to the banana that started, you know, thousands of years ago. So we've selected food for certain qualities. A general guideline is that the deeper the color, the better for you. So you can think about this with something like grapefruit. So a white grapefruit still is going to have vitamin C, still is going to have antioxidants. If you get a ruby red grapefruit, it has more antioxidants. If you get a blood orange or a blood red grapefruit, like a hundred times the antioxidants of the white grapefruit. Now, peaches and nectarines are the one exception to that rule. And not all white foods are bad for you. You know, I tell people choose more brown, but, you know, white cauliflower, radishes, those all have lots of benefits. But again, purple cauliflower has 10 times the antioxidants as white cauliflower. So these really bright, vibrant colors are a, one way to look for food in the grocery store. So the dark red, the, you know, red bell peppers are better than green as far as antioxidant effect. Red lettuces and dark leafy green lettuces are going to be way better. You know, I don't even consider iceberg lettuce a, a vegetable. It's crunchy water in my book. Um, so that's, that's one guide. Sometimes the smaller the fruit is too, it's a little bit more packed with nutrients. So one example in the book was tomatoes. Um, we all think, oh, the, these beautiful giant heirloom tomatoes, they have to be really healthy for us. Well, when you measure the lycopene level, which is kind of the big antioxidant in tomatoes, it's actually the highest in cherry tomatoes. So again, not really intuitive, um, but kind of the, the guideline is pick the brightest color, um, the things that are more tart or bitter have higher antioxidant levels. So things like arugula or mustard greens, radish greens, those types of things, they kind of pack a punch with those antioxidants. Um, but yeah, it they actually there actually was a study, you know, you've all heard eat an apple a day. There was a study to see what that does to your triglyceride level. And uh, they chose the golden delicious apple, which is one that probably most people know. It's very sweet. And at the end of, I don't remember if the study was 30 or 60 days, but at the end of that study, the participants who ate an apple every day, their triglyceride level went up. And it's because of the 
the the golden delicious has been bred to be sweet and delicious and very um readily available sugars uh, so again maybe picking some of the more tart apples actually granny smith not many people love them because they are so tart but it's a great option from a um, lower uh, glycemic index area and antioxidant level wow great winning strategies i love just the visualization of the brighter the better and the rainbow and things that just make this easy for us because certainly we need those simple winning strategies what about bananas? They've really gotten a rap for being <laughs> full of sugar. And, and so good, bad, what are your thoughts? I think it depends on what your goals are, right? Um, and again, a serving is the size of your fist. So most bananas in the store are two, two and a half, three servings, right? So if you have half a banana and you pair that with some nut butter or slice it into your oatmeal that also has flaxseed. What I always like to have people think of is A, to increase your servings of fruits and veg, try to get at least one serving of fruits and veggie with every meal and snack, right? And then pair that with a healthy protein and a fat. So it's that half of an apple with nut butter. It's, you know, your handful of grapes or berries with a handful of raw almonds so that you, because what, in addition to the fiber from the fruits and veg, the protein and the fat actually slows down the digestion. So you're going to feel full and stay full longer. And you're also not going to have that glycemic load spike. So if I have a banana, I usually pair it with nut butter and then it, you know, I feel pretty happy about it and it doesn't give me a, a, a spike and a crash. But again, if you're going to eat two or three bananas a day, that's probably not a healthy choice. It's kind of an everything in moderation. Um, and vary your sources, right? You you can have some higher glycemic index foods, pair those with the with a, a protein and a fat, and then think about you know what kind of low carb options can I do through the day? Greens, you know, the cruciferous vegetables, some of our pears and apples and things like that. Berries are actually incredibly high in fiber. I think raspberry is actually the highest fiber, kind of pound for pound, of any of our fruits, and it's soluble fiber, which is really important for cholesterol management too. Well, I just love how everything we're talking about fits into really our life is that it's about the variety. It's about making sure that we're pairing it. You know, we've got to be teaming up with people in our lives that are really helping us to feel better and feel good and support all the changes that we're making. That's another thing that's so important when we talk about being a champion for change. Who are we hanging out with? And again, back to our leadership cue, that's what we are leading change. And we are leading that we're going to come up with this Con, it's really complex, and yet we're going to come up with some winning strategies and ways to train you to be a champion for you in your daily choices. So here we go, team. Accept the challenge. Go out and win your nutrition this week and see how it feels. That's what we're here for is to be on your support team and be here to cheer you on as you champion the change that matters to you. Thank you, Dr. Hunter. Thank you, guys. Bye.